Hello and welcome to Emily Victor, a Thief 2 fan mission by Getan. It's the sequel to Last Send that we played uh, last time. Uh, it doesn't have a briefing video, so let's read the text as usual. Following his jubilant triumph over this challenging brigand, which left him with a well filled purse, Garrett has, more or less, given himself up to the pleasure of the senses, and especially that of precious wines. Without a doubt, this city pleases him to no end, once it has been wiped clean of all vermin, that is. The King of Thieves will then be able to reign unfettered, without any mishaps or other torments, except those that could be inflicted on him by the guards, dogs belonging to the local lords of Delore. Why should he give up this chance to live an easy, carefree life, to a ripe old age and death only from natural causes? The taverns are accommodating, the pieces of gold jingle the most beautiful music, and the perfume from the wines flatter the most subtle of spirits. That's more than enough for our friend. Although, do we really have to talk about subtleties? Because it's on this that everything is anchored? Pleasure is only better if it is entered into parsimoniously, i.e. with excessive frugality. But this adage has not found an adept in the person of our dear Garrett, for whom the notion of pleasure is too rare for him to sustain his last crumbs. All that wine, all those lights, those smiles, that smile. Nevertheless, one time does not make it a habit. It's on waking up the following morning, his skull feeling like it was being crushed by an anvil, that the first question comes to his spirit. Where am I? His head crackling with thousands of painful darts, he attempts a few clumsy steps. A vain effort. He falls heavily on the unfamiliar bed. May pestilence take those deceitful liquors. These walls, this dresser, this room, it was all perfectly strange to him. And the young beauty of the night before, who could perhaps have helped him to fill in the blanks in his bruised memory, is a long time gone. From far away, sounds come to him, dampened and timid, the shuffling of feet, a whistle, spewing out of phlegm. Familiar sounds. He leans forwards. Now that he is sitting, the world capsizes anew. My god, he has to pull himself together at all costs and to smother the thunder from an evening of abusive excess. His hand shakes convulsively on the bed frame and he observes his surroundings anew with a shifty, sickly eye. It's at that moment that he becomes conscious of one thing, of something so terrifying that glacial drops of perspiration begin to spread between his shoulder blades. His equipment! He has forgotten his equipment! At the tavern, no doubt. Have mercy! Did the wine have to be so potent, or the woman be so beautiful that he would find himself far from familiar surroundings, and moreover, stripped of all protection? Thus, by cursing himself, he finally finds the willpower to get up and to set off towards the door. As he sticks his head through the open doorway, he takes a look around and figures that he appears to be in a manor. Naturally, his next thought is, what kind of things couldn't I do on these premises? What joy! He still had his lockpicks. Alright, so... The morning after. Uh, now, there was... The name Emily Victor is familiar. There was a letter in uh, Last Sen, signed by it, was information for, uh, for the thief Last Sen. Uh, not information about him, information for him, like she was informing him or something, but I don't remember the context. Even though it was only yesterday I read it. Um, as other people will tell you, you're reading things aloud in a... If you're focusing on reading things aloud, the... Um, the meaning it doesn't tend to stick as well as when you're reading it for your own <laughs> information. Okay, so Expert adds another objective. Once you're done to get out of here, there's only one possible exit. I think I'm going to take it just for, go on Expert just for that. Um, because I prefer to have a defined point to leaving the mission. And the loot goal isn't changing, so let's just leave it at that. Providence has landed you in a spot that is very pleasing to your extravagant tastes, uh, if less pleasing to your cranium for the moment. Crab 2200 in loot. You have little apart from your lockpicks. You left your blackjack, sword, arrows, etc. back in the tavern. Replenish your equipment. Once you're done, uh, get out of here. There is only one possible exit. The large front gate. Well, I mean... Uh, it's impressive that Garrett has the uh, politeness, sense of, you know, presence of mind, patience to make the bed again. Personal diary. I went to the market. Sweet goddess, if only I could have run into Larsen. I saw him the day before yesterday. I had the vapors. He's so elegant. I'm happy the steward has placed the key for the upper levels in my care. 
A mark of Sir Delorey's confidence. My last son will be so pleased. Still no news from my sweetheart. What is he doing? Where is he? Goodbye, lovely gifts and light-hearted jests made on my account, and which pleased me so much. It's now six days since I haven't any news of last son. My handsome rebel has left for other pastures. Bastard! But I will get my revenge. Yesterday I encountered an odd-looking man skirting along the walls. Later on that evening I ran into that bizarre man once again when I went to wash Lady Ashley's sheets. She had suffered some indispositions during the night. He was leaning against the wall near the pub. Os artistes. He gave me this strange look. I believe he was drunk since his eyes were bloodshot. Earlier we had exchanged a few words. I tried to start a conversation by explaining that the chicken was exceptionally tasty for the season, but he only gave me a furtive sideways glance. Not a talker, that one. He must belong to a race of timid people, with that habit he has of pressing himself against the wall whenever someone comes near him. But what can I do? I admit that I have a weakness for the timid and sickly ones of life. They are so touching. Naturally, I took pity on him and gave him one of Lady Ashley's scarves. He looked like he was very cold. It's true that the air is really cool for the season. I was so happy about my good deed that I ignored the absence of thanks from my new taciturn friend for a gift so generously offered. And so one thing led to another, and by nightfall we were as high as kites. Indeed, it should have been a lively evening and nonetheless pleasant, but I only have the vaguest of memories. I don't even remember the name of the man who was sleeping in my bed. Best that he wake and leave now. I need to go to work. Cheerio, Lassen. I don't need you anymore. Louison. I better get out of here now. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, Louison was in uh, with letters from Lassen. Mentioning her. Okay, do I have a map? Probably not, right? Yeah. Get loot, get my stuff, get out. Wanna get in, get on with it, get over with, and get out. Get it? <clears throat> He's got a water arrow suit there, can I? Is the light from the torch dim enough? Can we get close enough? What's that? Now maybe I should try from behind him. Hmm. Maybe next time. Well, she doesn't seem like she's going should have joined the army. anywhere in particular. What's so that? The army get to march around outside. Oh. Gee, I must have imagined it. <laughs> mm. I thought I saw a water crystal sitting there. Who was that there? I saw something. In the army. Yeah. Well... Oh, uh, no, it's the handle. I miss. I completely mistook the handle of the pot. Okay. That makes a little more sense. It's like... Oh, is, is someone over there? Hello? Hmm. Nothing there. Nothing there. Oh, this place must be getting to me. <clears throat> Ma'am, quiet. There's nothing here. Yes, all I've got is my lockpicks, right? Lockpicks and compass, and now piece of bread. Wait, did I start with the piece of bread? Did I pick it up? I don't remember picking it up. Oh no, I just got it off the table just now, yes. Who was that there? I saw something. I just started collecting this stuff. Hello? Hmm. Nothing there. <clears throat> Apples? Well. Oops, I missed one? I missed one. Aha, uh -huh, there's the water crystals. Or oh, one of them. Ah! Oh, is, is someone over there? Hmm. Oof, this place gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too, man. To work. There is gold up there, but how do we get to it? Without, uh... There we are. Could go to the basement. Is that you, Kevil? I should have joined the army. Well, doesn't seem like anything now. Get to march around outside. Nothing what, there. What about the other one? This place must be getting to me. Who was that there? I saw something. Well, doesn't seem like anything now. You try the basement. Hello? Hmm. Nothing there. Let's try, mm -hmm. let's try the cellar. Look for some hair of the dog, right? More wine. Oh, that's not wine barrels, that's electricity nonsense. 
It's quiet, thankfully, otherwise Garrett's migraine would be a uh, hangover, I suppose, not migraine. Head pounding for various reasons. Might have been exacerbated. Oh, this takes us to the gar uh, to the garden, to the yard. Are we going to say yarden? Because my brain was thinking both words at once. I don't think yarden is generally the uh, recognized term. Are oh, you are walking around? Are you? What? What's that noise? I just heard it. It's like a ding sound. I will be patrolling upstairs if you need the key, Perk. Oh, that's equipment. Okay, now I have a destination. Who's making that noise? Armory. Oh, she's coming back. Stupid. It's probably just some rookie. I guess the doors, but then she's coming back. At nothing. <laughs> no, you certainly did not. Until the back is turned and then go out. This isn't the garden anyway, this is this is a armory and general storage. Patrolling upstairs is Burke. Oh, you're looking my way. Okay, he's practicing fighting there. He's got some noise problems. Alright, well. Turn around, man. Turn around. Go back, go back to your fighting. Come on. The other way. Or maybe I can just sneak anyway. Yeah, it's dim enough. Hmm. Alright, we could go back inside. Before I do, let's see a little more of this yard. But with this newfound awareness of there being some guards. Must be one of the brothers again. Ah, that's the mansion proper, I see. Alright, that's gonna be guard quarters then. So yeah, let's go in here. It's not it's not part of the mansion. That didn't sound like rats. I don't know, it squeaked a bit like rats. <clears throat> a rope arrow, okay, that could immediately come in handy. Hmm, is she gonna hear these sounds and wake? Thankfully not, these soldiers sleep well. Very good. Okay, I was wondering if there might be something sitting up there. Now there is a window. Question is, can I get to it without making noise? No, it's a cupboard. Apologies, I had to suddenly sneeze. Oh, it's a, it's a cupboard so large you could hide in it, okay. 
that's useful to know because uh, carrot. If I need a if I need a cubby hole to hide in, there is one. Okay, is he turning around and waving his sword again, or is he just staying there? If he's staying there, I could grab some arrows out of the forward behind him. You know what? Let's give it a try. Who knows if a crate could come in handy? but we can't get there. Okay. So we need to go inside. Or we need to go through the other archway there. Can we do that? Yeah, inside is possible. I'm just wondering about that guard there. And how I can successfully get past him. Maybe I can sneak right by the window and he won't see me. Where's the shot, I think. Why am I carrying this crate with me? I don't know, it's my pet now. Yeah, the window ledge blocked the sight. That's good. Aha, uh -huh, and no locked gate on this side. That's much better. Scout the place before you go in is what I like. Is a bright lamp, which is mm, disarmingly bright. Doesn't seem to be casting much of a shadow on the on the ground, but it will light me up. That's for sure. For the sake of verisimilitude, the uh, cold air in the actual winter time here is making my fingers cold. Scarf wouldn't help with that, I guess. Hmm. Let's say the rope arrow is useful, but it doesn't actually look like the rope arrow is going to be useful. There's a window in the tower there that's maybe way out but it's not a way in so try to go just going in the front door I suppose. Is that really a, is that really my options? The front door or that side door? I didn't I didn't look up over there enough. I don't think there was anything. <clears throat> I'm not confident of that announcement. Yeah there isn't and door it is then. Or maybe the front door is a really terrible idea. <clears throat> she has a key. Wait, wasn't she coming and going from the kitchen? Maybe that's the key to the other side gate. Maybe that's what I need. I just picked up a crate in case a crate would be useful. Not because I have any specific reason to believe it will be. What's over there? Oh well. Back to work. Now that guy isn't moving, that's a difficult thing there.
I'm gonna get back to the kitchen. Maybe that's a better way. And let's see. find out. Maybe we can get, look at that key. I don't know. But neither of those entrance doors looks promising to me. In terms of giving me good access to the house without too many guards around. The side door might be possible. The front door's clearly out of the question. <laughs> What's that? Strange. Oh, we got more crates. We got. What was that? There's the front gate guards. Who are you? What are you writing? These servants no longer know the right of things. Bloody fools! I am the steward, am I not? They tend to forget it, however. Sir Delory is a good man, yet when I tell them that they that they just scoff. Dirty country bumpkins. I will never understand these people. They're so gross. Like that bizarre servant, for example, who's always sniffing around as if she was plucked something nasty. I told Louison to stop prowling around Sir Delory. The Lord has better things to do than to go for laddering. There is also that little pest. Always spying on you with that look in her eyes and those words coming. Child of the devil. Nor can I any longer put up with Gus with his awful habit of vomiting everywhere when he is intoxicated. Ah, if only I could make them all disappear. Last night I came upon an aid by the wine barrels. He was drunk. Be gone, you alcoholic. But he babbled on with that peasant accent about a story such as would put one to sleep standing up. About a certain Mr. Plonk or Plonk who gets into the basement at nightfall so he can savour a few small glasses. In short, I understood nothing. I just yelled at him to take his responsibilities more seriously and to tell the truth instead of spewing out such stupidity. And with that I grabbed him by his poncho and sent him on his way by kicking his fat backside. One should never confide in servants. They are sly and vicious. They never miss an occasion to make you look ridiculous. Recently I had an opening installed that it overlooks their recreation room. Now from my own room I can see everything they are plotting when they believe that my back is turned. Nothing escapes my notice. And I like it. I like observing them without being seen. I love to watch their gestures, their routines, read their intimate journals, penetrate into their dirty thoughts. I know everything. I see all. And they, the poor ignoramuses, they have the audacity to stick out their tongues at me when my back is turned. I have plunged into the filth of their grimy spirits. All they, they want to hide, I know. Ah, Sir Delore would be proud of me if we were to find out which one of them is really Emily Victor. Now. Ah, so. Right, the room with the table and the dragon banner. Be careful of because this guy is watching. Another guard with a key. Oh, purse. Purse. Even better than a key. Oh, there's that, there's that girl. Okay. We can pick a pocket as she comes back. I don't know if that's Louison or not. The floor key. That will be of value, I think. <clears throat> Well, someone's having a party. Or had a party. So is that the servant's recreation room that the guy is watching? Yes. Oh, okay. It's not like it's a hidden... Hidden opening. We can see quite happily. Or some cheese I'd like, but it feels a bit bright for my liking. Bit spend of water. Maybe for the sake of stealth, I should. Oh, you're not the one with the uh, purse. This is the one with the purse, okay. Don't come in here, man. Hmm. Well, let's see how observant this guy really is. Maybe I can just sneak past under the window and stay out of his sight. Yeah. Well, who's there? There's nobody here. Never mind. There's no one here. See? Exactly as I told you. 
Unfortunately, the bad news is we don't have a sword. So all these banners... are getting to live. It's not fair. Check out this room. I don't want to read the notices on the wall, but I want to know what I'm. What dangers I'm dealing with first. <laughs> so servants' quarters seem suitably sparse. So it's immediately visible in this mission. They, uh, the improvement in um, design skills. It's massively better laid out, thought out. I mean, that's usually. First missions are exciting to see because it's like, hey, new mapper. I mean, obviously, this time it's a very old map at this. I guess I was doing Thief maps long before I was. But from my perspective as a player, like, okay, this is the first first time map, and then the second map is much more exciting because you suddenly get to see what they can do when they're not constantly struggling like, struggling against the learning curve that's from it. Personal diary. I went to the market. Oh wait. Didn't I read this? Why does she have two copies of the diary? Maybe that's a mistake. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, I'm going to write back here. Oh, maybe she's got two copies of the diary. No, you fool, that's the room you started off in. You've gone around in a circle and you're not even noticing. Maybe that's the real mistake. It was, was, uh... it was you, Garrett. The real mistake was you all along. You're right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> wow, that must be some party. Okay, I don't want to come in this way towards them. I might be drunk, but they still have weapons. And those weapons will still make holes in me if uh, used with appropriate effect. A little modern theatre of Lady Nagond. Closed for security. Okay. There was another doorway into that room from the right hand side there, so I'll go that way from the from the east. Very popular. What? Very popular song among drunks. Oh, somebody has a uh, invested in an expensive lock for their chest. Surprising for a guard. Dear Mum, one more month working here, and I shall soon become sergeant. However, Sir Delory wasn't in favour of my promotion. It was Lady Cunegonde who insisted on it. It's strange, but I have the distinct impression that it was the fact that I was literate which shamed him. I wonder why. It is not always easy. Even though we only see him on rare occasions, Sir Delore does not leave us with even a moment of respite. He's afraid of... I don't know what or whom. He has barred up the armory and has personally taken charge of our equipment. We have to go to either him or Burke to get even a measly arrow. He has no confidence in anyone, and apart from himself, only Burke has the key to the armory. Located near the guards outside quarters. Yes, ma'am. It's important that you know where the armory is. I, I, I please memorize the location of the armory. I think that he is suffering from a genuine fear of being robbed. Burke says that this is not surprising, considering the way he obtained his treasures. No wonder he trusts no one. Indeed, there are certain valuables in this manner which could justify a burglary, but I know that Delorey's fortune extends far beyond the riches located here. I only have one wish. That is to finish my contract and to leave without delay. I do not like this place. Certain areas give me goosebumps, as if there was something sliding slowly between the cracks in the walls. 
something which doesn't belong on our level of consciousness. Sometimes at night I hear strange noises in the wall's joinery. I don't know if it is rats or... But those dirty tiny beasts would never make such a sound. It's more like a gurgle or rumble. The other day I was working my guard shift in Sir Delorey's quarters and... Oh my god, I had a horrible night. I was frozen to the bone, not on account of the temperature, but rather the night's atmosphere. I could feel an oppressive gaze on the back of my neck, which came from nowhere. And I believed that I was suffering from strange visions. I only wanted to do one thing, turn on my heels and flee far, far away from that infernal place. And then there is that damnable chamber. They talk about strange happenings in that room, and Delaray forbids anyone to enter it. And that right-hand man, Maurice, who never leaves Delaray, he has a way of staring at us, a transparent look of brute force. He is a strange man, no one knows anything about him. Delaray generally uses him as a go-between to relay his orders, and I suspect that Maurice adds a few more of his own when it is convenient for him to do so. Well, it is time for my duties once again. I'm guarding Lady Conagon's apartments today, and it seems that no one has seen her for several days. Yes, Sir Delore is adamant that no change has been made to the guard service. Take good care of yourself, Mom. Hugs and kisses. First. Okay, I will leave this note here, but, uh... Things to learn. There are secret passages. There are strange things going on. Well, presumably secret passages. Uh, look out for Maurice. There's this chamber. And uh, Lady Congond is... Gone somewhere. Well, that's maybe not a good place to leave it. I'm trying to drop it on the chest, that's fine. Okay, so there's a locked chest here which I need a key for. Ah. Carrot. Uh, yes, he's guarding Lady Cunnagon's apartment, so he will have the key to the chest. I thought I was ready to drop it. There it is. Very important that no one steals your blank cards. You know what? Leave them there. Treacherous shadows here. It's better. Okay, I need to go across there, but I think I hear a guard to the left. Indeed. The other thing to be wary of is uh, servant girl who's wandering around appears to come through this way. Lumbago or not, Robert will carry out his duties. You don't see me stop thinking just because I have a migraine. He is to be at his post for the early shift in front of the doors to my office. Sir Raymond Delaray. Observations. To all guards, please, for heaven's sake, stop your intestinal... Your internal brawls, especially ye bat, and you know very well what I'm talking about, your monkey. As long as you can't control yourselves, the master refuses to change the furniture in your recreation room. Captain of the guards. Salpus. Anonymous. To all guards, do not drink any wine from the last vat. It has been found that the latter was adulterated due to an incorrect measurement of ingredients during fabrication. Steward. Too late. I'm sick. Don't come near me. Maybe contagious. Forest. Lady McCoy has complained once again that items in her room have gone missing during her absence. Items that are, uh, intimate. Please return them to their owner if you happen to come upon them by chance. I personally suspect someone, Captain of the Guards. Run, Forrest, run! Anonymous. Will the one who threw up on the sly in the guardroom please come to excuse themselves and clean it up without delay? I am fed up with your alcoholic dissipations. What was that, Gus? It was Gilbert, who once again cleaned up your mess in the recreation room last week. As if Gilbert ain't nothing else to do. Gilbert ain't paid to do that. She has more important things to do. Come to another guards. Like taking care of ye, for example. Anonymous. Ye asked for it. I'm gonna kill ye. Come to another guards. Oh, these guys are all friendly, aren't they? I, 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 I love you. You're my buddy, Gus. You're my bro. You're my brother for life. Till, till death. You make me laugh. Especially when you have your chamber popped up over your head. And we'll never be separated, right? We'll pursue villains together and we'll beat them up together. But we'll be law officers without fear and without... 
for life. Since you're my pal, I'm gonna write you a little secret. Forrest is hiding a lot of coins in his chest so he can buy himself a manor. That's why he always keeps a key on him. <laughs> Alright, the chump who loves you forever. Ah. So sweet. There's something just there. Mm, something there. Nothing there. This guy's a there? enormous peripheral vision. Okay, is that like, going to be the upper floor's key? Oh, there's guards coming. Can't reach. Let's just wait till the guards... I'm no longer uh, facing this direction. I see one coming around the corner right now. No, it's not the key anyway. Okay. So I want to go the long way around. Well, I could creep across the floor. I have no moss, and then rope my way up. But I think the other there's a tower stair I saw that might be. Is someone there? More viable. What was that? Did you see anything? Oh. Coming around again. Go to the tower stair. Oh wow, he managed several steps without collapsing. Well done, Gus. Yep. Keeping that chamber pot balanced amazingly well. That that takes skill, I, you know, that takes real skill. I'm impressed. I mean you're drunk as a skunk, but you focus on the still staying focused on the important things, keeping that chamber pot where it belongs. I'm waiting back because I don't know I don't know where the uh, the servant girl is. Oh, it sounds like the guard would have been watching as I ran past her anyway. Ah, here she comes as well. Trying to watch in two directions at once. Not always easy. There goes the guards. There she comes. Good timing, actually. He's gonna go to the kitchen, and I'm just gonna follow along behind. <clears throat> Wait, I think I saw something. No, you didn't. Okay. Should be able to get to the upper floors up here. I see. Relatively easily, but they're going to be locked. Nothing we can't fix. Am I hearing the guards down below, or am I hearing guards up here? It sounds like it's down below. Okay. Right. I guess nobody really comes into this room. Guards up here, right? Oh, they've got security cameras. I mean, there's Burke patrolling up here. And, uh, Aubert is up here. Robert, as I'm saying, because it's much easier to say the, <laughs> the English versions of the names. Nobody locks the door, so. I think that's good for me, but... Oh, nice clean water in the bath. No, 
No, they've allowed some water crystals to accumulate. <sighs> Nice. Yeah, that's one of the guards. He's got, a, he's got a key, so maybe that is Burke. Or maybe that's Burke. Oh, this guy doesn't have a key. I'm seeing no guards, and all of a sudden they see three. There's one running, someone running about back and forth at the far end of the corridor. This torch would be a good opportunity, I think, for whatever. For Karras sake? Are you a mechanist, Burke? We ought to get some of those fancy mechanist lights. They never fall out. <sighs> That's what I need. Oh, there's, oh that's, uh, there is a mechanist there, okay. He was the one who said for Kara's sake, there's someone there, I guess. Okay, I'm not getting down that hallway. Ah, uh, this is a camera. Oh, there's another camera, actually. I'm so tired of walking around in the dark all the time. You know what? I think. Mm. What? <clears throat> Someone took. took offense to that. That's weird. Just didn't do anything to the fire? Did it impact in front of the fire? What the fuck is that hitting? So I'm hitting the mechanist man here? Well, I wasted three. Well. Guess it's fine. For the sake of a little loot. See, he's already calmed down. I didn't realize what the mechanist uniforms were waterproof. So he didn't even notice. It's good to know. It must have been rats. Oh, <clears throat> Nothing on that one? No, alright. It's an amazing meeting you guys are having. The clearing throat club. I'd love to go across there. <coughs> Extremely noisy floor. Hmm, thought I saw something. But one of these guards comes this way and he's not here, so it seems like my moment. Let's try not to run in here, it tends to alert people. If they're not heavy sleepers. Also the picking locks, of course. Nope, that seems okay. Okay, do you guys have anything on your belts? No. And that was just... I think I just faintly heard the sound of the guard coming through here. Oh, he comes back this way too. Okay, I did not realize that. I don't see anything now. What the hell were they re reacting to? They didn't move. The guard is coming in and out of this bedroom. Something seems to be wary of. You know what? Keep the door open so I can hear the footsteps approaching. So 
little bit suspicious of a guard coming in and out of the room with uh, somebody asleep in it. That isn't the guard room. Guard barracks. And standing over a sleeping lady watching them. Not suspicious, no man. Not suspicious at all. What are you doing to that table? Pathfinding is stuck. <laughs> well, he is obsessed, isn't it? business yeah. Wow. I guess it is valuable, so the luck is worth it. Okay ma'am, you don't seem to have any other valuables on you now. My question is, where is this guard? I don't know how far he goes. I don't know if we've got time to get out. That's the other one. No, that's him. to move back up this way. Ah, good thing we didn't try roping up there, huh? We would have walked straight into the camera. Ah, uh, the camera that's watching it. The valuable lens. Hmm. Saw something there. Hmm. That is exciting. Valuable lens? Bars. There is no way, like, that camera doesn't really turn away far enough, does it? Doesn't feel like I'm gonna be able to reach that with the camera on. Well, maybe if I can come through the archway, I can make. When the camera's turning away, I can maybe run in and I grab it and get back out again. Probably be worth the attempt. You're not coming here, are you? No. That is a whole way I haven't been down. Another kitchen? Oh, that is going to be worth uh, another water arrow. People keep money in their safes. All right. Well, I got my I got my water arrow refunded. That's very very nice. <gasps> Bread, cheese, mm, all the beautiful food these people have. Okay, right, not not the tray, the cheese. There it is. Oh, 
Okay, storage room. This is a nice... Hello. It's a nice room just to have as a place to... Hide convenient... Oh. Hmm. Wait a minute. That's the guy we saw running back and forth. What the hell are you doing, man? Oh, de delivering messages? He's got a scroll. <laughs> Strange, we can see, but we can't hear. I see. What is up with him? Oh, that's that's that must be uh, Robert, who's who's not feeling very well. I see he's running to the toilet. It's not it's not a scroll of a message. It's it's a uh, roll of toilet paper. Yes, Forrest. Sorry, that's Forrest, not not Robert. The other one. Okay, yeah, there was nothing, man. Okay, so going up and down that corridor would be unwise, I think. And we know that that room there is just a bathroom, so... Oh, oh, oh. Just got to walk into there. What's this? seem to be taking the turns. Okay, the problem with the idea of coming from that hallway is the two guards standing outside there. Hmm. So I haven't been down that hallway yet. That's the way the other guy comes, right? Can I get down the hall without being seen? Yeah, those guys aren't going to see me. Let me suddenly take a peek. Oh, this is where we came in. So this leads to the guards' room, right? If I remember correctly. Well, that's the guards' room. No, that's the bathroom. Well, there's a guard's room downstairs. Okay. Well, I want to try that door there, but wait till this guy's not looking. I think we're far enough away from the camera that the camera's not a threat. This guy will turn off in a second anyway. Turn aside. I don't think those guards are going to see me at this distance either. Hello. Bring on here. I thought it was a scrumpled note. This is a scrumpled note. I know who you are and what you have done. So you're just now skirting the walls, shadow among shadows. You think that you are indiscernible, right? But I, I have observed you and I see you even now. I also know that you will find this letter, and that you will read it with particular attention. Yet you are not off the mark in sticking around these premises. There are thousands and thousands in stolen goods to interest you, Mr. Garrett. But that is your name, is it not? Or is it Gurnet? Or Garpet? Ah, no matter. If you persevere a little, I know that you will find a certain well-being here. Above all, dig around diligently, and don't leave any stone unturned. But before you vanish into your surroundings, Mr. Garrett, just one more thing. Since you will not be leaving us so quickly, would you allow yourself to be tempted by something which shines considerably and burns the hearts of men? Need I ask? I know that you will accept, since I'm talking about money, Mr. Garrett, and a proposal that is not to be taken lightly. And to give you access to the treasures that I am alluding to, I advise you to examine the master of these premises very carefully. His name is Delaray, and he is very rich. 
But maybe they've already told you that. Delaray is an ambitious and corrupt man. Recently he has acquired several warehouses on the docks, warehouses which hold in their depths a multitude of valuable objects. So Delaray's ultimate wealth founded on the goods that were left behind by the small business owners that Delaray has royally screwed. There is enough there to make up a real fortune. All of his fortune, in fact. All you need, Mr. Garrett, is one key. The key to the warehouses. You'll use it for another mission. And it never leaves Delaray. Totally plundering this despot also includes stripping him of certain property title deeds which have been cashed away in his suite in a secret cache. Delaray meets regularly with his agents, locals of uncertain ability and more or less willing accomplices. These meetings take place in the ancient monastery's former armory. You can access the monastery through the door in the wall opposite the double door entrance to Delaray's suite. This message causes you to be somewhat perplexed, right? May it not distract you from your mission. For the night, some doors are closed, so I leave you with a key that you could find very useful. It gives access from the ground floor to a secret passage which leads to the suites of Lady Conagond, the Delaray's wife. By this way, you could access Delaray's apartments. One more thing, Mr. Garrett. When you make it to the warehouses too much later and this adventure is finished, bring along a cart. You definitely won't be able to fit everything into that old carryall of yours. <laughs> Best wishes, Emily Victor. New objectives. Steal the key Delaray is carrying on his belt. Find and meet with Emily Victor. Get and destroy Delaray's property title deeds. All right, well, uh, we have had a sudden twist in uh, a fate. Someone is watching us, perhaps even now. Through these banners, peeking through the weave. But the mystery is, wait, you said you left a key there before I forget. The secret passage key, okay. With that, I think it's an excellent place to leave the episode. So next time we will go snooping around, firstly for forest money, secondly for secret passages, and see you then.